end of a skein of a hank of yarn. It is the best feeling in the world. Let there, oh wait, was it the third day? <laughs> and on a particular day, he said, let there be light. Oh my God. Uh -huh. This is the third time I'm recording the intro. I wash my face or I wash my hair after a long day of work. Do you guys do that? And usually when any type of work that I do, I tend to like suck up the auras and the energies of whatever it is that I'm doing. This uh, immigration uh, work that I'm interning at, it just gets to me sometimes because you, I don't know, you learn a lot from a person when you're doing that kind of work. So after a long, long day, I feel so drained from like my aura, from like my energies. I don't know, it's weird. I probably sound weird saying it, but I yearn to come back home and start working on my crochet projects again. <laughs> oh, I am mentally tired, but I need to tire myself out physically. So I am going to try and finish this garment, which I have been working on at midnight these last couple of nights. I heated up a nice big cup of coffee. By the way, I'm dyeing my hair soon. That's gonna be in a whole nother separate video for you all. <sighs> but anyways, I don't know if the other times that I did this intro, if I was too boring or whatnot, but if you see cutting between three different days of me recording, don't freak out. That's just the nature of this. Sometimes I feel like talking, sometimes I don't. Ugh. Oh my God, I just sneeze. I hate sneezing. Like when you sneeze and you like scratch your throat as opposed to just letting it all come out of your nose. That's me every single time and I hate it and it hurts. Today's a Mace of Skeins themed video. We are going to be using Macy's yarn. This is her DK weight. Let's get that zoomed in. Look at that. Normally I use fingering weight, but this was gifted to me in her winter box. This is her DK weight and this is in the colorway candlelight. I immediately got motivated and everything. And you know me, I'm that type of crocheter where even if I'm working on five different projects, which I technically am, if I see something that motivates me, I want to work on it really, really quickly. And since this is a DK weight, this should work up a little bit quicker than fingering weights. As soon as I saw this colorway, I asked my girlfriend what she wanted, what I should make with it, either with a scarf or a shawl or whatnot. And she recommended I, or she requested that I do a shawl. So I'm going to do that. And when I was looking through my stash to see what I can combine this with, because I do want to mix this with other yarns as well, because one hank is not going to be enough to make a shawl, but I want to make... Uh, if I combine it with something else, it'll be no problem. So what I decided to do is combine it with this Lion Brand yarn, Woolies. This is in the Se Sequoia colorway, if I'm not mistaken, even though the label's gone, I remember. The affiliate link in the description box below. If you are interested in ordering any Lion Brand yarns, you can go ahead and click that link and any order you order through that link, I will get a small commission from it. So if you do order from lionbrandyarns.com, I'd appreciate it. You do it by clicking my link first and then putting your order in. So this is the plan. Bam. I'm gonna combine it with date night yarn in this brown colorway. I forgot what it's called, sorry. I think this is gonna look really, really cool. Something shiny, something chunky, and with this hand-dyed yarn, it should make an amazing shawl. I'm just curious, I'm literally improvising this as I go, uh, but I will be explaining my steps, so if you wanna go ahead and do it, go ahead, and if you do, make sure you tag me on Instagram, at cptlimon, and that info's in the description box as well. If you ever recreate any of my garments, I would highly appreciate if you tag me, because I think that is just so, so cool. Shout out to Karen, who's already done a, a couple of my shawls, uh, scarves, so thank you for that. And so since this is a Mace of Skeins themed episode, I am going to literally, I got this candle in her winter box as well. It is a wooden wick candle. Smells all the pepperminty goodness and whatnot. So let's go ahead and light it up so we can get into the creativity mood. Oh wait, I should show the label right there. You go. There you go. The great thing, this is the first wooden wick candle I've ever owned. And the great thing about it that I just love is that the wood crackles as you light, as it's being, as it's lit. And that sound to me, if you don't know, Netflix actually has a fireplace show. It's literally hour long episodes of just a fireplace playing. And you can, if you have a nice big TV at home, you can literally have it playing when you have a house party or something like that. <clears throat> which you shouldn't be having in this pandemic, but 
you know, the sound of crackling wood to me is just so, so relaxing. I love bonfires and I live next to a forest preserve here. So we get definitely get enough dry wood and stuff for us to be able to have bonfires. But that's just that sound. I'm trying to find the speaker. Can you hear that? I have to wind this first. So let's go ahead and wind some yarn. I'm gonna shut up and let's go ahead and wind this yarn, see how it looks up caked up, and then we're gonna go ahead and get to work right away. Check that out. That is the yarn wound up. Let's get a little bit more light in here. It is a nice cranberry eggplanty colorway with hints of gold. Very, very nice. This turned out really cool. Nice and squishy. Don't break apart as I pull it out. Mm -hmm. Bam! There you go. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so we have our yarn wound up. Check that out. Very, very beautiful. That is nice. This is the first time I'm actually using something that is in this colorway of the hue. I haven't used like a maroon type of colorway before or anything like that. All right, let's talk hooks. Once again, I'm using my trusty Likey Hooks wooden hook set. For date nights, I believe the recommended hook size is an I, which is a 5.5 millimeter hook, which I will be loyal to, or uh, which I will be using. And then the chunky yarn, usually they're L's or K's. And I think for this case, I will be using a, <clears throat> I'll use a L hook just because I want the yarn to last as much as I can. And then for the, I was just using it right here. We're going to be using an E for the fingering or DK weight. Oh wait, no, I can't use E then because I use E for fingering, which means DK would have to be either an F or a G. Mm, executive decision. It is on the thicker side, this weight or her particular yarn base. So I think I'm going to go with a G. G for millimeter hook. We'll be using a I 5.5 millimeter hook. For the woolies, I will be using an L 8 millimeter hook. Using this as my inspiration, like seeing how the dark green breaks apart this colorway, I think I'm going to do the same thing. So wherever you see this like Christmassy colorway, I'm going to be using the egg, the DK weight because it'll be variegated technically. And then I will be using date night to border this so that way it has a shiny outline if that makes sense and then I will be using the chunky yarn to break apart the sections of whenever I use the different colorway. In terms of stitches I think I'm just going to keep everything half double crochet and let the yarn do the talking and let the textures do the talking. I don't think I'm going to do any cable work for this just because this is the first time I'm using her yarn and this particular base so I want to keep things nice and simple. Who is start off the border with chunky because it's easier to crochet 
smaller yarns into thicker yarns, in my opinion. 54, 55, 70. Where is my model garment? Let's measure. All right, almost there. Let's do 10 more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 80. I believe 80 should be fine. If I wrap it around my shoulders, does it reach? Doing my half double crochets. So starting foundation chain is 86 half double crochet with wool ease from Lion Brand Yarns. All right, so after doing our first row of half double crochet, I am going into the date night yarns. And what I'm doing is I'm adding one stitch and then two alternating. So one, two, one, two, one, two. Just because of the difference in yarns, you don't want to add two in each one because then you'll end up with too many per stitch. Guys, look at how this is working up. This looks so good. Wait, why can't I zoom in? There you go. Look at how this is working up. This looks so cool. It's called candlelight and Macy, if you're watching this, I can totally see why you called it candlelight because these little flecks of gold are so cute. Like it literally looks like a candlelight going through the yarn. I see your vision, I see it, I see it, and I love it. I is doing one stitch in each one after this because um, it is a DK base, so it, it's kind of similar to date night. Not as thick, but kind of similar. Cool, so I just finished, I'm finishing up uh, row number four. And so I left you last night with me doing the first five rows of 85 half double crochet. And this is my progress right now. And all I'm literally doing is just alternating between the three different yarns. Isn't that nice? It's a really great combination of earth tones. And this eggplant cranberry color is really, really popping next to the brown. Everything is all in half double crochet. And here, if you remembered last night, I told you about how to bring up your yarn as you're working your way up. And this is another example of me doing that. So down here, I stopped with the chunky yarn and I had to bring it up here to use it. And I literally just did single crochet all going up until it was time to use the yarn again. And then I used it here. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other yarns. And what that does is it helps you hide all of your yarn strands when you're switching between three different yarns. And I'm gonna do it again once I go back using the chunky yarn, can't count. Four of the hand dyed yarn, and then I went back and repeated what I did. So two more of date night, and then I did two rows of chunky, two rows of date night, and I'm just gonna increase this hand dyed yarn section. I'm gonna try and make it uh, as wide as I can. Look at that. Oh. There we go, this side looks pretty really cool. Cause you have all the chunky yarn here and it gives you a nice silhouette of the overall garment. Let's do some close-ups for you all because the back camera looks different from the front camera. So this is what I've been working on right now. I started here, so I got my foundation chain, chunky, two date night, four hand dyed yarn, two date night, too chunky, too date night. And then here, I'll probably do double of this. So if this was four, I'll probably do eight rows of half of the hand dyed yarn. And I have less than half of the chunky yarn left. So I'm gonna save the chunky yarn as much as I can to use it on the bottom and the trimming of the garment. So I'm gonna focus more on using up the date night and the hand dyed yarn before I start using the chunky yarn again. Because keep in mind, as you keep working your way up, you're technically making the garment bigger and you're gonna need more chunky yarn as you keep making your garment bigger to give it a nice border, depending on whatever yarn you finish in. So I want, to, I want it to finish with a chunky yarn because since I started with it, it's gonna look cohesive and it's gonna look really, really nice. I think I ate one of my hairs. I was talking to Zach and he was telling me how he loved this colorway that came in my winter box and he has the colorway that I normally would have picked because my girlfriend bought me this box, but. The reason why it was funny, because as we were talking, he mentioned that he liked this colorway, and I, as we were conversing, you know, like when you're talking to someone and like a point comes up in your head and you realize something as you're talking to someone. So that happened, and I realized that I never really gravitated towards any burgundy or cranberry colorways. I think because of my elementary school uniform, I my uniform used to be a uh, maroon burgundy polo with khaki pants 
And I had to wear that for about eight years straight. And it was just one of those things where I just realized, I didn't realize that I had a trauma on that colorway. So when he was asking me about this colorway, it like the idea came in my head and I'm like, wow, like for real, I never really picked this colorway. And I guess that's why, because I just wasn't very, I wasn't, it reminds me of elementary school uniform colors. And I guess that's a bad thing or a good thing. After using this yarn and seeing how it's working up with these two different size of these sizes of yarn, I'm back in love and I might, now I like, I got over the fear of this particular color of burgundy and maroon. And so I think I will be keeping an eye on other colorways like this because I am over my fear. I am willing to use maroons and burgundies now. I don't cut my yarns until the very, very end. And when you don't cut your yarns at the very end and you start off with a chunky weight, you actually have the ability to bring it up on the sides and hide all of the yarns here. So see, you get a nice clean edge. This came out really, really cool. I'm trying to use up all of the yarn because I want to see for your guys' reference and for my reference, just how much one hank of DK hand-dyed yarn can go. We're in a pandemic, I'm unemployed. I mean, I'm interning, but still it's not enough. And that's why I opened this channel just to get a little tip every now and then in the months. But I wanted to show you all how you can just buy one hank of yarn from your favorite hand dyer and mix it up with other affordable yarns and you can get something just as luxurious and beautiful and amazing and blah, blah, blah. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and leave it in the comments down below and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. <clears throat> just wanted to do an update because I have been recording my progress all the way through, but I wanted to give an update as to what I'm doing down here in this bottom section. So really, really quick, two half double crochets Oh my God, everything is reversed when I look at the camera. So, every, so what I'm doing here is two half double crochets, skip one, two half double crochets, skip one. And you yourself, I believe technically this is 86 stitches going long, but just in case you ever lose some stitches as you're transferring from the different yarn weights, which does, which may or may not happen depending on how your uh, how do you call it mental memory is of what you're doing in their garment because a lot of people need stitch counters and whatnot which is totally fine you do you but for me uh if things tend to be uneven i will course correct in the moment because i am improvising when i do most of these designs so for example if at the edge i always make sure that there's one or two half double crochets so it stays nice and clean at the edges you see that and then I start doing the fancy work. That's just my personal preference. But for example, sometimes you'll add two or three at the end. Do what you have to do so that way each of the two half double crochets are in between each other. Because you see how they are in the middle of one another? That's what I want you, that's what you have to do. So see, there's two here and then two in between and then two in between. Do what you gotta do in the beginnings so that way everything stays nice and even as you're going along. Sacrifice the edges if you have to to keep things nice and even. And yeah, cause see everything even here, there's some two, some of them are three, some of them are two. But at the end of the day, as long as your middle section is great, it's gonna come out really, really good. End of a stain of a hank of yarn. It is the best feeling in the world. It's given me one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, five rows of this beautiful, beautiful half double crochet look. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? How many more rows do you think I can get out of this yarn? Ah, you guys, I have some news. We got some yarn chicken. Oh my God. So some of the dye is actually rubbing off on my hands. I don't know if you can see that in my nails. Do you see that? Um, which she did warn about, but I guess, and she said you just wash it off and stuff. Try not to breathe it in. But I've got some yarn chicken, guys. Yarn chicken. Do you think I will make it? Four, four more stitches, guys. <laughs> no. <sighs> All right, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to do this? I'm trying to keep everything balled up. Because as you move the garment around, it gets tangled. Okay. okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to single crochet. 
the date night all the way up along the side and then I'm gonna see how I can kind of sneak it into where the hand dyed yarn ends. Hopefully this doesn't look too wonky. Okay guys, hold on. I can figure this out, I can figure this out. Come on, come on, you can figure this out. How are you gonna do this? How are you gonna do this? Okay, executive decision. I'm gonna get rid of this last row because this looks ugly. I'm gonna undo this. I'm gonna undo that last row and then cut it. Give me one sec, I'm gonna undo the row, I'm gonna cut it, end it on this side, and then I'm gonna start the date night from this side. So that's gonna be the executive decision. All right, so I made a couple sandwiches while I was looking for my scissors. Snip. Oh my god, these are so dull. Snip. That's done. Let me close it up on this side. There. Now I can start on the other side with the date night. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Anyway, this is how I eat my ham sandwiches. I always put, or if I can, some type of chips inside. Preferably flaming Hots. Mm -hmm. Into that crunch. Mm -hmm. Real quick, so after I did my, after I cut the yarn, I literally just did a half double crochet into all of it. I did one, one row of half double crochet, and then I did the same thing that I did down here, the pattern, which is two half double crochet and then chain one. And then I did three rows of half double crochet and then one more of two half double crochet chain one. This will probably be the last row for this. And then I will be able to use the chunky yarn to close it up and combine it together. What do you guys think? Do you guys think I have enough for one more row? Do you think I have enough for one more row? Snip snip a technique that I showed you guys before of moving your yarn up to add the border. I'm literally gonna do it now so that way you guys can see what that looks like, so. Cool, so you just grab your yarn wherever you left it off at and you're gonna go ahead and add your single crochets. Since this is a chunkier yarn, I'm making the executive decision to skip every other stitch just because I know from experience that this chunky yarn will, uh, it'll give it a more snug drape because if you add too many stitches, especially with the chunky yarn, it'll just look too wonky and I really want this to retain its rectangular shape. For the sake of this trim or the border. I'm going to be doing it in single crochet just because I know that I have this much yarn left. So I really need to do single crochet. It's the only way that I think I'm going to have enough to be able to close it up. And if not, executive decision, I'll use the leftover date night to close up and attach the poncho together. Hopefully that's not the case, but if that's the case, at least you have the leftover yarn to combine it with. Because this is chunky, when you skip every other stitch, it's actually draping quite nicely. And you can see right here, like there's no curling here. It's just going flat, which is what we want. When I get here to the corner, I'm gonna add one single crochet to that corner, chain one, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add another single crochet right away. And I'm gonna hide all of my ends at this point because they're just stragglers and you have the opportunity to hide them with the chunky yarn. So you're killing two birds with one stone. Chicken moment, guys. This is what's left. Do you guys think I'll be able to finish it? I'm on the last panel and then I can be able to combine it. So you guys let me know in the comments. Do you think I'll have enough to close it up? Hopefully I do. And I actually did it. So cool. We made it to our, I finished the border with this much left. Will he make it? Yarn chicken, guys. Yarn chicken, literally, again. I just barely made it, yo. Barely made it. Whoa. All right. Semi-moment of truth, guys. Let's test this out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, and it has a nice little cool collar here. 
You can like fold this out if you want or curl it in, whatever you want. And you got yourself a cool little collar, guys. Check that out. It's so, uh, so, so cool. No matter how you wear it, nice and loose or even over your shoulders. Look at that. I could even just hug myself and it's. <laughs> and it's that time to do our shout outs for our Limon Crochet members. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for your support. Special shout out to our Limon influencers, Noemi Torres and Blanca Valtierrez. Thank you so much. And let's give a shout out to our Limon Inner Circle members. We got Ola Joe, the crocheting sailor, Araceli Pintado, Cocktails and Crochet with Coco. And Karen Miller, thank you so much. And to all of the Limon family members, I see you. And thank you so much. You guys can see them here listed on the screen. I appreciate each and every one of you. You make this process, like I said, so much fun to hang out with you all here on YouTube. Thank you so much. And if you want to join, you can go ahead and click that join button to see more information and the extra perks that you get for joining and becoming a member. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.